morning. Welcome to Cortland United Church. Thank you for joining us in worship this morning, those that are here, as well as those that are joining us online. For our announcements today, notice the back of your bulletin, we do have our board meeting. Well, once again, we're doing those over Zoom, so anybody who's interested in Zoom this uh, Thursday at 7 o'clock, uh, we'll do a uh, monthly board meeting. Do we have other announcements we want to lift up at this time? Any other announcements? Yes. Um, I have a gunfire fundraiser for people. We're going to do a t-shirt, t-shirt giveaway. Um, so if you want to get involved in that, you can get a pizza dough and pizza stuff. That's the reason you can do that. And I also have items for the Okay, cookie dough and pizza stuff, but I have to put the stuff on the pizza? Okay, well, we'll have to talk about that, so we may need to go. She'll be downstairs, so if you want to order some stuff for a show choir, uh, we'll be downstairs to do that. Any other announcements? Kelsey, did you want to talk about next week? Okay, so next week, you want to be here? They're going to show a little bit video from Vacation Bible School with all the pictures and stuff. So, thank you. Any other announcements? Yes. I want to make sure everybody comes down and has birthday cake with us downstairs. But also, I didn't make coffee because I'm not sure how it's made. So, if somebody thought I was making it, it's not been made. So, if anybody knows how to make some coffee. Okay. <laughs> What's that? Okay, so Peg was down there making coffee. Awesome. Yeah, Thank you. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would be a crisis. We would have to stop worship, get coffee. But so I think we've got that averted. Thank you, Kay. Any other announcements? If not, then please stand. Turn to one another. Make sure everyone feels welcome this morning. Good morning. Good morning, John. I'm going to catch you while you're all standing so you don't all sit down and stand back up again. So once you get back to your seats, remain standing as we uh, join together to sing this morning. And we're going to start out this morning, number 412 in the hymnal, Son of My Soul. So once you get to your seat, grab your hymnal, turn to 412, and let's join in singing together, Son of My Soul. Son of my soul, thou Savior dear, it is not night if thou be near. Oh, may no earth-born cloud arise to hide thee from thy soul. soft dews of kindly sleep, my weary eyelids gently steep, be my last thought how sweet to Thank you. 
117. Let's sing together, We Come, O Christ, to You, number 117. join together in the call to worship which is printed in your bulletin if you would respond in the bold print though storms rage around me I will clothe myself with the whole armor of God I will place strength and determination as my shoes to aid me in my ministry and mission for God Be strong in the Lord who provides for your every need. Let us join together in the opening prayer, which is printed in the bulletin. In the beauty of this place, we have come to pray, to worship, to receive healing and hope. We come from the struggles and the triumphs of the week, needing to feel the soothing presence of God. Lord, be with us this day. Calm and soothe our souls. Cause us to rejoice that you have provided a special place where we may gather to talk of your presence and love, to sing your praises, and to be empowered to go forth to serve you. Amen. At this time, may we have the youth and the children please come forward for the children's sermon. Okay. All right. Grab one of those. 
Grab one of those. There's an orange one. There we go. Grab one. There we go. All right. Grab one, grab one. Everyone get one. Everyone got one. Got one. There we go. Okay. Who knows how to play those? Can you play a song? Nobody? Maybe. How long do you think it would take you to learn how to play a song with that? What's that? A few centuries. A year? Barb Murray could. Barb, we could give you one of these and she could... Yes, you could. Okay, any, anybody, anybody play an instrument here? Play an instrument here, anybody? What do you play? Sax saxophone and violin. Okay. Any, any instrument players here? Which play? Trombone? The ulcimer? Dulcimer, wow. What'd you play? Saxophone? Saxophone? Trumpet? Yeah, trumpet. That's what I play. Yeah. You know, the sermon's going to be really short today with all this stuff. Okay, all right. Well, today, what I want to talk about is that this stuff is to learn how to play is really hard. As you can tell, it's not easily done. So as we make noises like this to learn how to play it, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on just a second. Uh, to learn how to play it uh, takes a long time and a lot of work. So when you guys are outside, you can play these when you're outside. Uh, but today is about doing stuff that's really hard. Okay, let's be quiet for a second and pray with me. Dear God, May we learn to do things that are really hard. Oh, man. Thanks for coming up. Have suckers on the way back. If you take a green book and turn to 3132, let's join in singing together. This is the house of God, number 3132 in the green book. This is the house of God, this is the gate of heaven, this is a holy place, you are always welcome, trust and know I'm always with you through all changes and all seasons when you wake and when you're sleeping all is well live in the house of God live at the gate of heaven live in a holy
Good morning. Good morning. Once in a blue moon, we, and last night was a seasonal blue moon, in there case you, you didn't yeah, know, yeah. we get to have a birthday celebration on Sunday. And today is Ruth's birthday. So we are going to sing happy birthday to Ruth. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ruth. Happy birthday to you. Yay. Happy birthday, dear Ruth. Yeah. You are indeed a special lady. Yeah. <laughs> so the first scripture reading today is from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. That's found on page 187 of the New Testament, if you'd like to follow along. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on, this, on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. So to that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, uh, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The second reading is from John chapter 6, verses 59 through 69, and that's on page 93 in the New, New Testament. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Percanium. Caper, ah, Capernaum, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went with him. So Jesus asked the 12, do you always wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. And this ends the reading. Thank you, Bob. A guy joins a monastery and it is one where they take a vow of silence. They can't say anything for seven years. 
seven years, say nothing, and then after seven years, they get to say two words. After seven years, this guy says, cold floors. Seven years later, they go, doesn't say anything. Seven years later, he says, bad food. Seven more years go along, and finally he says, after those seven years, he says, I quit. The guy in charge in the monastery says, well, I don't blame you. All you did is complain when you were here. Things that are hard. Some of you may have seen the movie Jungle Book, or Jungle Cruise is the name of it. Jungle Cruise is the new movie that is out. It is, it's a really good movie. Um, and Jungle Cruise is they get to an area and they're looking for a flower that no one has ever been able to get to because it has this healing power. And so Dwayne Johnson, The Rock is the one that is the guide to get there. And it always reminded me of the story of someone was in the jungle looking for a specific place, and they were looking for a path to get there. And they're like, there is no path. You only can follow me. What we're about to do with Christianity is not easy. Let me go further than that. It's really hard. Let me go further than that. Most people fall away. It's some of the most difficult things we will do is to say we have faith and then to follow through with our faith. Now, I had a friend whose children are struggling with the church. His children are in their 30s. And his children really are struggling with the church because it, in some way it's not providing them comfort. Our faith is really not about comfort. When we talk of salvation, it's a big church word. In some, what we're talking about is, is that when we're reaching out and searching for all the things that are really important in life, we get to a point where there is one thing that is more important than anything else, and it's our relationship with God, and we have to have it because it's the only thing that we need. Doing something that is hard. So I was looking up today, uh, this week, uh, those that signed the Declaration of Independence. I always thought, wouldn't it be cool to have your name on one of those documents? I mean, forever have your name. Well, there were 56, and back then there were men, that signed the Declaration of, Declaration of Independence. Fifty, uh, five of them were captured by the British, and they were tortured and they died. Twelve have their homes ransacked and burned. Two lost their sons in the war. Another two were captured, their sons were captured. Nine of the 56 fought and died from wounds in the war. Most of them suffered for putting their name on a document. For the sermon title today, you would recognize it because it comes from uh, JFK, John F. Kennedy. And, and actually, I saw this on the news this week. It was talking about John F. Kennedy when we were planning. Right now, people are trying to get into space, especially if you have billions of dollars. But people are trying to get into space. And he was talking about going to the moon. This was 50 years ago. He says, we chose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and to do other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That's his famous line. Not because it's easy, it's because it's hard. Because the goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energy and skills, because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept, we're unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win and the others too. Not because it's easy, but because it's hard. We hear difficult sayings within the Bible, such as resurrection, it seems easy, but no one really wants to be crucified. Salvation, yes, but we have to ask for repentance. Love, yes, but sometimes we don't want to do the work that it takes to work on love. So, in Disney World, where Maggie is, they have this rock with this sword in it. 
Who pulls out the sword? King Arthur. That's right. King Arthur is the, had to be the right person at the right time to pull the sword out of the rock. So in Ephesians, when Barbara's reading today, that we had to clothe ourselves in that which would prepare us for what God wants us to do. And so we have military terms there. Um, we need to put on a breastplate, and we need to put on a helmet, and we need to have a sword. We need to be ready for what's about ready to come upon us. Um, in Greek terms, they use a term called rima, R-H-E-M-A, and in that some way we need to clothe ourselves with the Spirit of God to do the work of God for what's about ready to happen. Uh, in Germany, they opened a new airport, and it cost $7 billion for this new airport. And so before they opened up the new airport, what they did was is they had a dry run. If they brought actors in to get everyone that was going to work there to be prepared for anything that was about ready to happen. So they threw everything at the book through these actors of things that could go wrong to see how they would be ready to respond. Some of you who have had heart issues will know that they want to test your heart, uh, you know, and then some of them, they'll put you on a, a treadmill or they'll put medicine in you to see how your body responds. In some way, we need to be prepared to do the same thing with our faith. Because we know there will be challenges either in our own souls with people we relate to, in our community. And here's what happened, and Barb was reading it today. They started to do the difficult things, and Jesus noticed that people started falling away. Imagine that. He fed the 5,000, and they witnessed it. He raised people from the dead. He walked on water. He was an incredible preacher, teacher, listener. The Son of God was in their presence. And it got hard, and they walked away. Imagine some of the most difficult things that you have gone through in your life. And you know there are moments when we do those things, we feel like, you know what, I'm just, I'm going to call it good. And then we realize what's most important to us, the love of our family, our friends, our relationship, maybe your work, and our God. And sometimes the work is worth it. And so he turned to the disciples and he asked them, do you want to walk away? And Peter asked this incredible question, to whom would we turn? Isn't that an interesting response? To whom would we turn? Now, you have family and friends who sometimes go through this struggle. If not God, then whom? So, I was looking it all up this week. You might have friends that would consider themselves to be atheists. So, let me, let me look it up here. Um, atheist means someone doesn't believe in God or a divine being. Atheist. There are some people who would consider themselves to be agnostic. Agnostic, we think an atheist is the same thing, but it's really not. An agnostic never believes nor disbelieves in a God or religious doctrine. Agnostics assert, assert the possibility of, of this, but we really don't have the ability to know. So some people don't believe at all. Some people would consider themselves agnostic, and then, you may have friends that fit in here, there are some people that would consider themselves to be theists or deists. A theist is an opposite of atheists. Theists believe in the existence of God. A deist believes in God, but a deist believes God set the world in motion, 
and then God stepped back. And God just is allowing it to continue to function. I've used the example over and over again about a clockmaker. That God created the clock and got it turning, and then God allows the clock to go. Where I'm going with all of this is, deep down in your soul, to whom do you turn? And what do you believe? Where does your faith land? Because we have the most incredible, challenging things that happen to us. And when those things happen, we need to hang on to what's most important. And we need to prepare ourselves for the most challenging things that happen in life. And here's my guess. Is most of you have been so inspired by God, when you don't even know you know what to do, you call out God's name. When you have nothing else to hang on to, you reach out and you pray to God. When you don't even know what prayer is, you find yourself in conversation with God. Because we call ourselves Christians, believers, we have faith because we need it. We celebrate 96 today, 96 years old. We are so blessed within this congregation to have a foundation of people of faith. The one thing I know about Ruth is she was a teacher. When we did our Sunday school class, she just didn't teach years ago. She still has people that come by that say hi that she probably taught 70 years ago, 80 years ago. Because they were so moved by how she cared. The same thing happens with our understanding of God. There are moments in our life we are so moved that no one can take it away from us that when the struggles happen, we know we can always turn to God. And God will always be there. And we have surrounded ourselves with that spirit And we are believers, and we are Christians, and we are loved by God. In the name of Christ, amen. If you take your hymnal and turn to 270, let's join in singing together wonderful words of life. And if you're willing and able, would you please stand as we sing number 270 in the hymn. Wonderful words of life. 
Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctify forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. You may be seated. It's the time within our worship we lift up our joys and concerns from our community of faith. Do we have joys and concerns you'd like to lift up at this time? Yes. Yeah. So for a cat, one of them had a cleft palate, and they're trying to figure out how they can nurse and help make that happen. Beautiful pictures of the cats on Facebook. They're as cute as can be. Thank you. Other joys and concerns. Yes. I had all of you praying for Bev last week um, for her heart surgery. And she went in Monday morning and was going to, was prepping for surgery, and the surgeon came in and said, I am not comfortable doing this surgery. I am going to recommend that you maybe go to see someone at Mayo. So thank you for your prayers. I think because of those prayers, the doctor was given a, a, a wisdom, a guidance from God that maybe he was yeah. should refer it on to somewhere else. So just continued yeah. prayers for Bev. Prayers for Bev that she was prepping. We had been praying for her and her possible heart surgery that they're thinking, thinking about what to do next. Thank you. Other joys and concerns? Yes. I'm delighted to have my daughter Sarah here with us today. So um, it's great to have her welcome. Yeah, Kara, nice to have you here. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> Other joys and concerns. I did get a text from Barb Benzinger for a couple prayers. One was for Cassie, uh, Shirley and Jeff Boyer's daughter. I knew Cassie because she was in our youth group at Gretna, um, she tossed, uh, tested positive for COVID, and she is pregnant and due next week. So they have real concerns for Cassie, and so keep uh, Jeff and Shirley and all their family in your prayers. When COVID first happened, Jeff and Shirley got, they got a pretty good case of it when it first happened. That was uh, almost a year ago. And then, uh, then she did say, Barb said, her son-in-law Jeff also um, has uh, uh, been having a headache and stuffy nose, and so I think uh, prayers for him as well. And then uh, one of my good friends, uh, Warren Shoming. Warren's a longtime pastor, used to serve just south of Gretna, just retired this past year. He has a really bad case of COVID. Uh, I bet he's 66. I wouldn't put Warren in the best of health condition, um, and, but it's been in the hospital for five days. And so uh, prayers for uh, Warren as they, he and his family. His wife is the one we've been concerned about. She's had cancer and some real bad health conditions. Uh, but I think we need to pray for Warren uh, as a part of our church community. Do we have other joys and concerns we'd like to lift up at this time? Yeah, pr uh, prayers for Adam. We had been lifting up. Adam had some heart issues. You know Adam. Adam's young. Um, and then some of the other stuff that Adam's been going through, they wondered if the heart not working well may have been a reason for some of his other health conditions. But uh, he has been back home and with his parents right now, staying with them as he kind of recovers from uh, some of the stuff they're trying to do. So how old is Adam? 20? 20? Yeah, has pacemaker. Um, I mean, they're just trying to get his heart to function at a good pace. So thank you for lifting that up. 
other joys and concerns. Yes. First, for those in Afghanistan and for the yeah. Christians that are being persecuted there. Prayers for that, all that is happening in Afghanistan and for our world and in some way that we can find a sense of peace and people could be safe. So thank you, Kay, for lifting that up. Other joys and concerns. If not, then, let's prepare our hearts for prayer if John and Kay would lead us in this quiet moment. In this quiet moment, Jesus, speak to me. Fill my heart with thy love divine. Your power let me see. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Let us pray. O God of all creation, may we breathe you in. May we be aware of your presence and the gift of your Holy Spirit. May we have a thankful heart for all that you give us. O God, in the midst of our challenges, may we reach out to you as we lift up our joys and concerns for those that are sick and in the midst of healing, for times of wonderful celebration, we know that you are always with us and you are leading the way. We ask, O oh God, as we go through this week, we may recognize what's before us and the challenges you may give us and give us the strength and the wisdom to be your follower. And now as people who have been loved and forgiven, let us now all join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now receive our tithes and our offerings. join together in the offertory prayer which is printed in your bulletin. May these gifts, gifts transform into faith, 
hope, peace, and grace for all of God's children. Amen. Let's remain standing for our closing hymn, number 3050, until Jesus comes, number 3050. Simon Peter asked the Lord, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And I believe that Peter is probably referring to what Jesus said just a few verses before. In verse 40, Jesus said, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and trusts in him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So if you have Jesus in your heart, you can look forward to that last day. So let's join in singing until Jesus comes. Until Jesus comes, until Jesus comes, I'll be watching and waiting until Jesus comes, until Jesus comes. Until Jesus comes, I'll be watching and waiting until Jesus comes. Until Jesus comes, until Jesus comes, I'll be watching and waiting until Jesus comes. Until Jesus comes, until Jesus comes. I'll be watching and waiting until Jesus comes. Let us go forth now, blessed by God, into a wonderful celebration for a birthday and a wonderful week that God has created. In the name of Christ, amen. <laughs>